Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I do want to speak about Inigo Martinez and how John Laporta wants to use Inigo Martinez to bring in Joao Felix permanently. We're also going to be talking about Mikhail Faye and the future of Kobarsi. There is a lot that we do have to discuss for today's video. If you guys are new here, welcome to the channel. I'm happy that you guys are here. If you guys are Barcelona fans, this is going to be the channel for you. So if you guys do want to support this YouTube channel, please like this video and also subscribe to the channel. I would really, really appreciate so let's first talk about Inigo Martinez. And it says here, according to Tony Juan Marty, that Barcelona is planning to find a new team for Inigo Martinez next season. So his contract does not end until June 30th, 2025. By the time we do get into this summer, he'll be 33 years old. And currently, according to the transfer market, he is worth around 6 million euros. In this season, Barcelona will be paying him 8.8 .8 million euros, which puts him as one of the most highest paid players in Barcelona. And in the next season, if they continue with Inigo Martinez, they would have to up his salary to 9.3 million euros a year. Now, I'm going to be very honest here. It never crossed my mind to sell Inigo Martinez because I think that he carries a lot of experience. He's not bad in matches. He performs very well. He's solid as a substitute and he brings a lot of leadership inside and outside the locker room. And I have always said that the only seven players Barcelona should be letting go of is Lenglet, Sergio Roberto, Marcos Alonso, Ansu Fati, Des, Oriol Romeo, and Eric Garcia. Garcia, but it is starting to seem like Inigo Martinez will be one of the players to leave in this summer. Tony Juan Marti also claimed that the presence of Arujo and Kunde and Kubarsi's emergence is why Barcelona is planning this. Inigo's attitude and performance is valued, but the club also says their fair play situation is delicate. His future and Marcos Alonso's looks to be far away from FC Barcelona. And so John Laporta wants a double win here. It's starting to seem like not only do they want to like let go of the player to emerge Kubarsi and his playing time, but also they would like to have another benefit from this, which is to introduce the permanent transfer of Joao Felix. It says here that Atletico is closely following the situation of Inigo Martinez, who is currently happy at Barcelona, but would like a more prominent role. Barcelona are attempting to use him as a way to keep Joao Felix in the summer, and this cannot be ruled out. So I do think that if Inigo Martinez does leave, his departure will mean that Felix's wages will fit in Barcelona's wage bill, because right now Inigo Martinez does earn 8.8 .8 million euros. I think that this could be a wage that we can pay to draw Felix. But the other question is, how is this going to affect the fee of draw Felix? Because I'm going to assume that Atletico Madrid agree with Barcelona that Barcelona can buy Felix for 40 million euros. I don't think that's going to be 110 or 80 million euros or 75 million euros. There's just no way. I think that Atletico Madrid really want to let go of the player just to get this headache away from the club. So Barcelona do have the leverage here. And so assuming also that Inigo Martinez goes to Atletico Madrid for around maybe maybe 10 million euros based off how well he has been performing. I think that he can reduce Felix's fee to 30 million euros, assuming again that Felix does get valued at 40 million euros. So 30 million euros for Felix and then paying him around 7 million euros a season would not be that bad. I would really welcome the permanent transfer of Felix and just have him continue to reinforce the left wing position. Moving on from that, like I've said that the main idea is for Mikael Faye or Eric Garcia to also take over Inigo Martinez's role as his departure is starting to be confirmed. So yes, we have Kubarsi, Kunde, and Arujo as our main center backs for the next season, but we do need those backups, right? What if Kubarsi does get injured? What if Kunde or Arujo does get injured? We need strong backups. And one of the ways that Barcelona are eyeing their strong backups is by either looking at Faye or Eric Garcia to strengthen the role. This is probably one of the reasons why Barcelona is so comfortable on letting go of Inigo Martinez is because we have also the emergence of Faye. And I believe that Faye would be the ideal one to replace Inigo Martinez as a backup to any of our main center backs. And I say that because he's strong, he's composed, his ball distribution is amazing, he can play out from the back, and most importantly, he knows how to shoot from outside the box and knows how to score free kicks. Those are two things that Barcelona currently cannot really do. We're not really good at free kicks. We're also not that great in shooting from outside the box. Faye can bring those type of traits to this Barcelona squad, and that would be amazing. So it's crazy to see how our academy continues to grow players from the age of six to the age of like 18 years old or turn around a player's career. Like with Faye, we brought him in at the age of 17 or 18 years old, and now we have turned him to be a complete monster in the back line. And now he seems like he's ready to come in to the first team. I also did make a video about how Kubarsi and Faye can be very compatible with one another. They can be a center back pairing just in case either Kunde or Arujo need to take a step down, whether it's because of too many minutes or because they're fatigued. It's great to know that we can build another great center back pairing between Faye and Kubarsi. Also, Faye can play as a left back 
back and we can have Kobarsi and Araujo at the same time with Fayez. So you can do so many things. And Inigo Martinez cannot do that. He cannot really play as a left back. And so to have Fayez come in for Inigo Martinez, taking Inigo Martinez out, it makes Barcelona much more dynamic. Xavi Hernandez also said during the pre-match preview for the match against Las Palmas, he said, in terms of Mikael Fayez, he's fast, aggressive, and great on the ball. I'm sure that one day he'll be able to help us a lot. Eric Garcia, another player who is looking at maybe replacing Inigo Martinez this summer, also spoke to Rack 1 earlier today, and this is what he said, and I quote, I know there's competition at Barcelona, but I also know I'm doing well at Girona. I know my football. Competition makes everything better. I have a contract. What is 100% is that I will go back to Barcelona. Then once I'm there, I'll see what happens. Now, I can see Garcia competing for a spot at Barcelona, and maybe, yes, Eric Garcia could get the second chance, but let me tell you, if you guys are fans of Eric Garcia, whoever's out there, right, that really likes Eric Garcia and his game, his chances are only going to decrease at Barcelona if someone like Hansi Flick does come in and Xavi Hernandez does come out. I'm just going I'm just going to put it out there because the way that Hansi Flick likes to play, he does not really add emphasis on technical center backs. Hansi Flick is somebody who likes to have very tall, defensive, physical center backs, not someone like Eric Garcia who is only very technical and not really tall and strong and has that physical presence. Hansi Flick would literally come to Barcelona and say, okay, Kubarsi, yes, you're okay, but you may not be a starter. Eric Garcia, you're going to have to be out because I don't even see you as a starter and you don't bring me what I want. And he's going to want to add emphasis on someone like Araujo and also maybe someone like Upamecano because that's simply just how Hansi Flick likes to have his sporting project. And with Xavi, there's always going to be that chance for Eric Garcia to maybe have a spot in the squad. And most importantly, we'll have Kubarsi continuing to be our starter in the back line. This is going to be something that I am going to be speaking about maybe later down this year once we do hear the future of Barcelona's coaching position. But as of now, it does seem like Inigo Martinez will go to Atletico Madrid, Joao Felix will have his permanent move, and then we have Mikael Faye as the replacement of Inigo Martinez. Speaking about Kubarsi, I do want to move on towards the next conversation and speak about like his future because Barcelona have already sent an offer to Kubarsi in terms of his contract renewal. They do consider him as a key player. They have offered him a long-term deal with a high salary and his release clause is going to be 1 billion euros. Barcelona aim to renew Kubarsi by the end of the season. Now, just to give you guys like some details on what Barcelona is going to be doing, his contract does expire in 2026 and he has a small release clause of like 10 million euros. So any club can buy Kubarsi if they want to in the summer. And that is why Barcelona want to renew the player to 1 billion euros. Now, because he is so young and he's still only 17 years old, he's still considered a minor, right? Because he has to turn 18 to be able to sign a long-term professional contract. Kubarsi cannot really do that right now. So as of now, Kubarsi does have a deal on the table where he can say, okay, this is going to be like the pre-agreement. And I promise you guys that once I turn 18 years old, I will sign the true contract that will extend me until 2030 or 2031 because Barcelona want to offer him, again, a long-term professional contract that is going to be extending for at the very least six to seven years. And I think that Kubarsi will accept. I don't see him going anywhere else. I think that if Kubarsi wants to have the best progression in these next two or three years, he needs to stay at Barcelona. And most importantly, I know it does get annoying and I keep referencing this, but it's just important. Most importantly, Xavi Hernandez has to be here because I think that if someone like him at the age of 16 years old comes in and plays amazing, it has to be because of the coach. The coach knows how to use Kubarsi well, whether he's 16 years old or 36 years old. Kubarsi is your man and he is the one that will for sure represent Barcelona's defense for the next 10 years. I cannot wait for this moment and hopefully Xavi Hernandez can be here to improve Kubarsi and to play alongside Mikael Faye. So speaking about youngsters, now I do want to move on to the last conversation for today. And I do want to speak about Lamin Yamal because it says here, according to Alex Pintanel, that the Spanish association is seriously contemplating the idea of calling up Lamin Yamal for both the Olympics and the Euros. Barcelona are in touch with the RFEF. They do not want Yamal to have excess minutes as it could affect his progression. And let me tell you guys, I am so worried about Yamal and whatever happens in these next five to six months because I I just don't know what the Spanish Federation are going to be doing with Yamal. Like, yes, I know that he's amazing, right? We saw him play so well against Brazil. It's exciting. The fans love it. Even I love it. And you can already see the projection of what's going to be happening in three years. People will talk about Yamal versus Andrik or maybe Yamal versus Kylian Mbappe. The future is now here. And so I get why there's a lot of excitement. I get why you want to see Yamal with Barcelona in the Olympics, in the Euros. But let me tell you guys one thing. De La Fuente said something very interesting about five to six days ago. He said, yes, Yamal played amazing 
amazing against Brazil. But now the goal is, can you maintain it? Because what made Messi and Ronaldo so great is that not only did they, did they perform at a high level, but they maintained that level for many years and they were consistent game after game. And one of the ways you can successfully stop a player from being consistent is by overplaying that player. That is the problem. Because if Barcelona and Spain want to maximize Yamal, they need to work together and talk closely with one another to make sure that Yamal does not get overused and have him progress effectively. Because progressing is not playing every game and playing every minute and playing 75 games a year. Again, if Yamal truly wants to be consistent in his career and play every game at a high level, you monitor his minutes. Because look, I just hope and I'm going to assume that Spain and Barcelona together, they have learned their lesson on why they should not overuse a certain player. And especially when they're only 16, 17, 18, 19 years old. Look at what happened with Pedri. Look at what happened with Ansu. And look at what happened with Gavi. What's the whole point of exploding these youngsters at the age of 17, 18 years old, and then only ruining their careers two years later? And so in these next five to six months, I want to see something like this. I want to see Yamal continue to have a prominent role at Barcelona because Barcelona have the right to, right? They have built Yamal to this moment. They have the right to use him 75 minutes to 80 minutes per game. And then in the Euros, he should be used as an impact sub and not play 90 minutes in every game. And then for the Olympics, I just don't want to see him there because look, after the Olympics, and this is what happened with Pedri, but after the Olympics, you have to go to the preseason with your club. And I don't want to see Yamal go through the Euros, go through the Olympics, and then four to five days later, he has to go play in the preseason for Barcelona. He needs a break. And I believe that the best break he can have would be between the Euros and then going straight to the preseason and just forget about the Olympics. And in that way, you would give him about at the very least five to six weeks of rest. And that would be really good. And so that is it. That is going to be wrapping up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.